Well, hello, good people. And Eagle and 49er fans, Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. Um, actually, I haven't had dinner yet. i got to figure out what in the world I am going to get to eat. So we have a very huge game. This is... Um, basically trying to save a season this is season salvage bowl uh for both of us um both teams cowboys 49ers have been hit with injuries and have been disappointing to their fans and things in fact it's kind of funny because i don't know where you guys are you know my, my, my 49er fans that have been pounding their chest it, it all i've been hearing is four picks against grossman and two fumbles what do you see about the bears oh wrong one no wrong wrong wrong, wrong clip excuse me all i've been hearing is crickets crickets yeah so so let me see if I can piss off 49er fans because um, they've got Brock Purdy. Okay, Brock Purdy has not looked that Purdy this week, uh, this year. And um, his stats are not quite as good as they have been. Now, what 49er fans I'm sure will say because, see, here, here's, here's, a, here's a crazy one. Brock Purdy last week. Last week, a 36.7 rating. Three interceptions. And, and, and two weeks before that, versus the Cardinals, one TD, two interceptions. A 62. His numbers for his rating have gone down from 113 to 91 it's been a bad year thus far he's got nine tds and seven interceptions and of course everybody talks about Dak prescott's a turnover machine and the funny thing is you know i i know he's been missing a lot of his weapons i know he has and and, and this this goes to the point of when i say uh and people don't seem to believe it that weapons matter weapons matter Okay, let's be clear here. You have to have, as Roger Staubach said, it doesn't matter how good a pass I throw if Drew Pearson's not there to catch it. And no truer words have been spoken before. That is the truth. You must have people who are there that can catch the football. So there's that. So apparently... After the 49ers game and after probably maybe the worst game that Brock Purdy's had in his career, uh, a 54% completion percentage, 212 yards, three interceptions, a 36.7. Apparently, Kyle Shanahan quietly chewed him out. Let me go to uh, exactly what happened. Santa Clara. This is an article. Um. um Dallas Cowboys News, okay? Updates from the Cowboys' next opponent, the 49ers. By T.C. Deckard. T.C., appreciate you. Kyle did something strange after the 49er loss, 28-18 to the Chiefs on Sunday. After his post-game press conference, he walked straight over to Brock Purdy at his locker and appeared to chew him out quietly for at least five minutes. Shanahan didn't yell because he clearly didn't want the media to hear what he was saying. But he waved his arms and he pointed his fingers and seemed acerbated. You don't have to be a body language expert to see he was upset and talking in a stern way. Purdy stood and faced Shanahan and nodded every few seconds like a good shoulder but didn't speak. Eventually, the two shook hands, and Shanahan left. A few minutes later, Purdy walked to the podium for the post-game press conference, so I asked him what Shanahan said to him in the locker room. So this is a response by Brock Purdy. 
we were just talking about some stuff throughout the game and just some moments throughout it and stuff how we can be better going forward Purdy said it was really just that it's certainly possible that Shanahan was talking constructively about the ways in which both he and Purdy can improve together. But that's not what the interaction looked like. So this is a, a perception of what it looked like. So we don't really know because we weren't there to hear it and so on. The way Shanahan um, gestated as he spoke, he created an appearance that he was slinging out Purdy for the mistakes Singling out Purdy for the mistakes and essentially blaming him for the loss. Coaching him up as he did in front of Purdy's teammates and media members that might have been responsible for the terrible loss to Shanahan's shoulders considering Andy Reid owns him. Purdy seemed humiliated. This is why players don't appreciate getting called out in the locker room by coaches after losses. Those conversations should be private. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm not, okay, I, I know 49 fans are, 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 are pissing, getting pissed off right now. I'm sure my emails are going to start flowing, or maybe not, maybe not. Um, but for those out there, if you are a 49er fan, or if you are the media, if you are Stephen A. Smith or um, Dan, you're lousy, and you now give Brock Purdy duck and cover, and say it's because Debo Samuels was out, Brandon Ayuk tore his ACL and MCL, you know, that those guys have missed time, that Christian McCaffrey, his running back, is not there. He doesn't have talent around him. I can agree with that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that Brock Purdy from last year and the year before looking great now just forgot how to play football. Au contraire, I'm gonna say that without having the weapons that he's had and been used to, having Ayuk and Debo Samuel's and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey, there's four guys that can take it to the house. There's four guys that you have to be worried about. And when you take those away and put it all on the quarterback's shoulders, contrary to what you believe, that a quarterback can just take anybody, lesser talent, and succeed is a misnomer. Although people will say, I, I have been hearing. Let me look at the stats. Because I'm curious, because they say, um, you know, I, I look at it and say, without Christian McCaffrey, that running game is not the same. But let me see how, because a lot of people are saying that the running game is not that bad. So, San Francisco running the football. They oh shit. Okay, so they still have a running game, at least compared to the Cowboys. Wow. Um, rushing the football, their offense ranks ninth at tries. Seventh in yardage, 13 TDs. Damn. Wow. That's nice. That's nice. And they're averaging, damn, 4.9 yards a carry? They're averaging a yard and a half more than the – okay. Uh, so, so much, look, they, they've already rushed, rushed the football for 1,049 yards. Damn. And they're three and four? Okay, so I take that back. Then Purdy has a running game. He's had Skittle Kittle, and he's had Debo and Ayuk in and out of the lineup. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe maybe that's why Kyle Shanahan was reading him the riot act. Go figure. So we'll see what we're going to see. I hope that the Cowboys, I really hope that the Cowboys dig deep and they go out there and they play like the Lions going for some revenge. Alrighty, good people. As always, you know I appreciate you guys. And um, a little joke to finish. It's just falling down because 500 is going to go in the net. So, you know, my ass can only take so much. You're uh -uh. Up that ass! Uh
Come on. Cock work. Cock work. Cock work. Cock work. Up. Yeah. Kick it. All right. Can only take so much. Fit, fit. Come on. Cock work, cock work, cock work, cock work. The Eagles are trying to. Uh, did I just say what I think? I... Uh, did.